Good evening. I'm Norman Robinson, and welcome to Affordable Housing Matters. An important question one may ask when looking to move into a new residence is, how safe is this community? On tonight's show, we will find out what the New Orleans Police and Justice Foundation is doing to provide safety on these volatile New Orleans streets. And later in the program, we will speak with the executive director of an organization that is engaging our local youth for the betterment of the New Orleans community. We have a great show planned for you this evening, so don't go far. Good game plan is the key to success. When my team hits the field, we always have a game plan. You should take the same approach with emergency planning. That's why Coach O and I urge you to get a game plan to make sure you, your family, and your pets are safe this hurricane season. Visit GoSepsGetAGamePlan.org and download the new and improved Get a Game Plan app for important emergency planning information and tools to keep you safe. Take advantage of the time you have before an emergency. Finalize your plans. Have three days worth of supplies and other essentials in your emergency supply kit. Contact your parish OEP office if you have medical or transportation issues that will make it difficult to evacuate. You play an important role in making our emergency plans work. Take the time to learn your responsibilities. Like I always say, one team, one heartbeat. The mission of the New Orleans Police and Justice Foundation is to make New Orleans a safer place in which to live, work, and visit. Joining me now to discuss their plan for safety is Ms. Melanie Talia, President and CEO of the New Orleans Police and Justice Foundation. Good evening and welcome to Affordable Housing Matters. Good evening, Norman. It's good to see you. It's always nice to see you. So tell me, what's up with um, the um, New Orleans um, uh, Police and Justice Foundation. What's what's on your radar? We have a lot going on right now, but our primary focus, the top two priorities, mm -hmm. are security cameras and recruiting for the New Orleans Police Department to increase the number of officers, the number of boots on the ground. Let's talk about security cameras. Sure. Um, how does that work, and who should be involved, and um, what's the process? All right. Well, I'll t we have four programs that are all working together. The first one that launched is Safe Cam NOLA, S-A-F-E-C-A-M-N-O-L-A, -E Safe Cam mm -hmm. NOLA, and that is a database, safecamnola.com. It's free, it's quick, it's easy. If you have a security camera on your home or on your business, mm -hmm. we want you to register your camera at safecamnola.com. Okay. That registry, think of it as a filing cabinet, mm -hmm. that registry is maintained by the New Orleans Police Department. They don't have access to your camera. If something happens in your neighborhood, the officers can go to their computer, put in that address with a vicinity, and then every camera registered in the area will come up. Otherwise, what happens is officers are either on foot mm -hmm. or in their cars, patrolling, walking, looking under overhangs, trying to find cameras in any given neighborhood. So it really helps to speed up an investigation and to capture someone who has done some wrong. But the flip side is also true. It helps to exclude people who may be considered a suspect and in fact have not done anything wrong. Now suppose I'm, I'm a homeowner and I'm listening to you describe this, this uh, Safe Cam NOLA project. And I don't have a camera. What, what do I do? And I want a camera. How do I go about that? So if you have the means, mm -hmm. you can, any camera can be installed upon your home and registered with the Safe Cam NOLA database. Mm -hmm. At the New Orleans Police and Justice Foundation, we launched a companion program, which we call Adopt a Block. Ah. And with private funds, we are able to install security cameras in crime hotspot neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, in neighborhoods that sometimes otherwise might not have a camera. And that w with those private monies, we have um, installed about 300 security cameras across the greater New Orleans area, and all of those cameras are registered with the New Orleans Police Department and Safe Cam NOLA. So I would have to live in a what's considered a hot spot to be eligible for that 
uh, adopt a block program? Our adopt a block program focuses on high crime hotspots. Mm -hmm. uh, when we have private funding available, we basically put out a shout out to the community and say, hey, if you're willing to host a camera, and if something happens, then you have footage on that camera, and you're willing to help the police department, you're willing to join that fight against crime, we will put that camera on your home, and it's not going to cost you anything. So who's monitoring this, this system, and, um, and how current is it? When SafeCam NOLA database was built, and when we started the process of installing security cameras with private funds, there was not yet the monitoring in place that we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody knows the city has been installing cameras all across the, uh, the, the, the in, uh, all across the eight police districts. Um, they're rather large and they've got yeah. flashing lights. And those cameras, those cameras are monitored and they are monitored by staff who are at the camera center 24 seven. The cameras are uh, integrated with the police department's 911 center. So as soon as an incident is initiated at the 911 center, an alert goes off at the camera center and those monitors, those technicians can immediately go to that camera and look for footage that could be critical to solving a crime, to making an arrest, and again, to excluding someone who perhaps ought not be a suspect. So this is happening in real time? This is happening in real time. And over the years, we can probably all think of an incident where someone was the victim of a crime, and it took, it took a very long time to solve that crime. Or, or maybe there were very few security cameras at that point in the game, but officers were able to put together the sequence of events that led up to a horrible incident, and that led them to ultimately the arrest and the conviction of the perpetrator. With this real-time opportunity, that time becomes so much shorter. And it's, it certainly is, I think, better for the community mm -hmm. if someone has done something bad to get them off the street quickly. But it's also better for the victim's family. If you don't know where your loved one is or you don't know what has happened, to struggle with that for weeks, months, and perhaps longer is just horribly difficult. If that can be brought to closure sooner, there's still great pain, but I think it, it, it's easier on the family. No question about it. And is this a sustainable program? Um, when we think of, of, of um, projects in the city of New Orleans, uh, the, the question often comes to mind is, well, is it going to be here no matter what administration is in office? This is a sustainable program. The camera center is located on Rampart Street. It is an amazing technological feat. Probably at this point, the premier real-time crime center in the country. And you, if you research, you'll find that there are others. And when we were building ours, we traveled to other crime centers to see what they had going on and to learn from their lessons and their mistakes. This is absolutely a sustainable project. The next piece of it, however, is to incorporate the private security cameras. We will uh, soon launch. How do, you, how do you do that? That, that seems like um, an, a, a, an, a monumental uh, project when you're talking about merging public and private um, pieces together. I think there was a point in time when it would have been a monumental project. But mm -hmm. in this day and age of technology, mm -hmm. it's easier than we think. So we will soon launch, working with Homeland Security and the Real-Time Crime Center, what we have dubbed Safe Cam Platinum. Ah. Safe Cam Platinum is seeking private security camera providers, whether you are a resident or a business, to have a camera on your home or business. Now, those cameras will have to be compatible with the Real-Time Crime Center technology. Mm -hmm and we are still working some of these things through. So the program is not rolled out yet. Keep, okay. keep, stay tuned, stay, stay tuned. But the concept is your footage from your private security camera will go into the same cloud as the footage from the city's security cameras. 
-hmm. And just as happens now, if there is an event or an incident mm -hmm. generated at the 911 center, the technicians at the crime center will get an alert. They can immediately pull the footage from that camera. It's not about technicians sitting at their desk looking to see if you're on your front porch reading the newspaper or when you're coming and going from your home. That's not at all So we're not talking big brother here, somebody spying on you. We're no, no. They are monitoring the cameras as mm -hmm. soon as an incident is created at the 911 center. Mm -hmm. And there are, unfortunately, more than too many incidents that are created. So many people are calling 911. Uh, so many people are generating calls for service. Officers themselves are initiating calls. When those incidents are created, that alert goes off and that technician immediately goes to that footage if there is a nearby camera. You mentioned officers. Let's talk about officers. Um, are, are we still at a low point in terms of the number of, of uh, personnel, uh, law enforcement personnel needed to uh, effectuate public safety in the greater New Orleans area? Right now we're at 1,206. Mm -hmm. um, there are, depending upon the expert you talk to, mm -hmm. some folks think we need as many as 1,575. Some folks think we could do it with something in the neighborhood of 1,400. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you make those calculations, we think about force multipliers, such as security cameras and crime analysis and data analysis and high crime uh, hot spot policing, other ways to uh, in, in increase your manpower. Mm -hmm. But we are right now at 1206. We've come a long way just since 2013. Mm -hmm. We've hired 500. So had we not hired those 500 instead of being at 1200 today, we might be at 700. Wow. A tremendous, tremendous difference. So right now we're at 1206. There's a very robust recruiting campaign that is in place. Mm -hmm. uh, we are attracting candidates, mm -hmm. not only from across the country, but around the world, including Puerto Rico, Jamaica, France, Ireland, and Switzerland. What makes us so attractive to people from the, the places that you just, just uh, uh, mentioned? Nor uh, Norman, you know what? The same reason you live here, mm -hmm. and the same reason I live here, mm -hmm. and why all your, our viewers are still here, is what's attracting people to New Orleans. New Orleans is a top destination city at this point. Whether you're celebrating New Year's Eve, you're getting married, whatever it happens to be. And then of course, Mardi Gras, Essence Fest. Mm -hmm. We have so much to do, whether you're young and single and you wanna go out every night and, and have a good time, or you're married with children and you're looking for a place to raise your family. Mm -hmm. The zoo, the aquarium, the insectarium. New Orleans has something for everybody. And it's, it's just so it, heartwarming to meet these young men and women from around the world coming to New Orleans, mm -hmm. choosing New Orleans, choosing NOPD as their career, choosing New Orleans as their home. But we don't want to lose sight of our own homegrown talent. We have, a, we have a real mm -hmm. culture here in New Orleans, and we want to maintain that. And sometimes no one understands it better than the our homegrown talent. Mm -hmm. So we encourage our homegrown, our local young people to apply. Mm -hmm. And if, if they are a little hesitant about taking the civil service exam or learning about the process, mm -hmm. we have a program called COPNOLA that is hosted by an incredible group of young vibrant New Orleanians who live here, work here, and are raising their families here. And they are doing anything and everything they can to help. So if someone wants to apply but has any hesitation about the ability to pass the civil service exam or the physical fitness exam, COPNOLA is, is a program that they should take advantage so of. So this COPNOLA program gets, it's sort of a tutoring thing that gets people it gets yes. people acclimated yes. to the civil service exam and to what, what how, how do they uh, run them through this process of, uh, of getting physically fit? So, so on, the, on the education side, on the testing side, they, uh, the people with the COPNOLA group yeah. met with civil service and together they worked on practice tests. Okay. So they will recreate the testing environment and they will 
give you a test to take. Once it's all said and done, they'll review your, your progress or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And then there are a couple of more uh, classes that you can attend to help you get ready for that. Now, on the physical fitness piece, yes, there is a guide on our website, on the joinnopd.org website, that tells you what you're going to need to be ready for. Some sit-ups, a run, and some other basic physical fitness tests that you need to pass initially to get into the police academy. Now, once you're in the academy, they got some mighty physically fit sergeants over there. They are going to give you a run for your money. <laughs> it sounds like the physical part might be more challenging. The physical part might be more challenging. It certainly would be for me. All right, no doubt but for me. Not this, not this group of men and women. The two classes we have in session okay. now, they're looking good. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Melanie Talia from the New Orleans Police and Justice Foundation. It's so good to have you here. Likewise, Norman. Thank right. you so much. You're welcome. Take care. When we return, we'll find out about a nonprofit that educates and empowers young people while at the same time reducing blight and providing affordable homes for teachers in New Orleans. Don't go far. Around here, we ride a lot of different things. A lot. Maybe it's because we know it's not just where you're going that counts, but also how you get there. That's why we have Blue Bikes, a simple and affordable bike share program just for our city. And if it's been a while since you've ridden a bike, don't worry, it'll come back to you. It's just like, well, you know. Blue Bikes, enjoy the ride. You know, Youth Rebuilding New Orleans engages the youth in the betterment of the New Orleans community. Volunteers help reduce blight by rebuilding distressed and foreclosed homes. Here to expound more on what they're doing in the community is Prince Holmes, Executive Director of Youth Rebuilding New Orleans, and one of the youngsters who are involved in this, who is involved in this program, Mr. Earl James, who is the site supervisor. Thank you, gentlemen for being here this evening. And ladies and gentlemen, you don't know this, but this is a bad man. Uh, Prince, Prince Holmes is a bad man. And, and I say that in the context of good, because he's got it going on. How, how, do, you, how do you manage to, um, to work with youngsters on a home renovating and building project? I mean, most people can't get the youngsters out of the bed in the morning. Well, it definitely helps uh, one that uh, I like to consider myself a young person as well, so I definitely resonate. So you can relate. Yeah, I can relate with uh, our young people, of course. Uh, and at the end of the day, just, uh, having trust in our young people, uh, somebody trusting in me in order to uh, be in, in this position, uh, so why not uh, carry out those same characteristics? Yeah, I was, I was excited to find out that this program existed, and I know that, that many of the viewers uh, watching this program don't know what what Youth Rebuilding New Orleans is all about. So why don't you fill us in so that uh, we, we, can, we can get brought up to date on what Youth Rebuilding New Orleans is all about. For sure. Uh, so Youth Rebuilding New Orleans is a youth-led, nonprofit organization started in uh, response of Hurricane Katrina. Uh, at the time, there were multiple natural disaster uh, relief organizations uh, that picked up. However, they didn't allow young people to give back anyone under the age of 18 uh, because of the city's insurance policy. Oh, they were worried about liability? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So uh, at the time, it was a group of young people from all different high schools who came out uh, to these neighborhoods in distress and helped out. They didn't know each other from Adam and Eve, and that was the coolest part. And we're actually calling out the adults. If young people can do this work, not knowing each other from Adam and Eve, uh, making a real change, mm -hmm. uh, why can't you? It could all be so simple. So they basically saw a problem, and uh, they acted on it. And, uh, and that, I tr it's pretty inspiring every time I say that, to be honest. Uh, there's all type of social uh, issues going on in the world. And uh, I feel that just given a chance and trust it upon, great things can happen. And you just, you just give these kids an opportunity to show what they can do 
to help rebuild and improve this city. That's your name, just giving an opportunity. If you give people opportunity, you never know what great thing could come from it. Just as simple as that. He's talked about you, Earl James. <laughs> <laughs> what skills have you learned working at um, uh, YR, you know? Well, I've been at Youth Rebuilding since the summer of 2016. Mm -hmm. um, I encountered a lot of good skills from Youth Rebuild. Uh, I actually didn't know how to do anything coming there, you know. Now I basically know how to do everything from sheetrock to tiling, from from hanging up sh uh, shingles to, you know, everything, roofing, everything. You know, I learned a lot of good skills from youth rebuilding New Orleans, you know. Yeah, I see your, your, your title is a site supervisor. Right. What does that mean? What are you responsible for? That's like if we get, because we often get volunteers. So mm -hmm. if we get volunteers, I'm the site supervisor. I, I train them on how to use proper tools, how to use a ladder the right way. And uh, I show them what they do throughout the day and just, you know, let them do their job and just come around and check and see if they're doing their they work the right way. How has this changed your life? Or it has it changed your life? It changed me in a big impact because, like, just to see the smiles on a person's face after you finish the home is just exciting, you know. And just to be doing it for a city where I was born and raised that, you know, it, it says a lot to a person, you know. And, like, the smiles on a person's face after you finish a completed job is just, like, spectacular. Like, can't get no better than that, you know. And Prince, as, as a executive director, you, you, you are Prince. And, and I'm not saying this to, to blow smoke because you you are uh, making life better for so many people who couldn't see their way out. They, there was no silver lining for them. And this project homework thing that you started, tell us about it. Yeah, but before I elaborate on that, I'd like to uh, just give a huge sh shout out to uh, Earl. Uh, Go ahead. He had a, Earl has crazy ambition. And that actually- Is that right? Yeah, got him into that position. So he discredited himself saying he didn't have much skill at all. He had plenty of skill. Uh, it's, he was just given an opportunity to show that skill. And he, he was a quick learner, of course. Uh, and that makes everybody's job easy. So it's just a pleasure to work uh, beside her, of course. And great things will be uh, coming for him pretty soon. I see it. We'll speak that into fruition. All right. So you want to you want to keep that as a surprise. You don't want to tell him what it is right now. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Funny man. <laughs> So what is the home, uh, the project homework um, project all about? Yeah, so basically we uh, sell, we acquire blighted properties and we basically sell those homes back to educators at a discounted rate, 80% of the market value. Uh, it's very important uh, this targeting and educators. Educators work with our young people day in and day out, uh, putting in close to 10 hours a day, uh, if not more. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also understand that educators don't get paid <laughs> the correct amount of money. Uh, they, they have a huge impact and influence on our young people's lives, but making uh, anywhere from 35000 to forty, roughly $45,000 a year. Uh, how could you survive? And their workload is tremendous. They often go home uh, doing, uh, putting in additional hours of work. Uh, and unfortunately, what I've learned in the last couple of years, uh, the turnover in the school system is crazy. Yeah. So t students don't have the same teacher uh, throughout their, whole, their entire four-year uh, tenure in high school. Uh, and when I was in high school, it wasn't the case. Uh, I went to Endicott mm -hmm. uh, High School. Uh, educators who I saw as freshmen, I saw as seniors as well, and that played so a huge impact. So there was some impact. consistency. Yeah. Of, uh, so you were able different to, teachers. yeah, you were able to build relationships, yes, meaningful relationships. And with the teachers, those people maybe. actually invested. So if we have different uh, teachers in uh, each year, how could a young person uh, ultimately trust? Going back to trust, uh, how could they uh, feel uh, worthy mm -hmm. because they don't feel like one is investing in them, mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately. We have so much turnover, one is because educators can't find stable housing at the end of the day. So this is a, this is a primary objective for you, yes. getting housing for, for educators. Yeah, not only educators, but we also serve the public servants as well. So uh, Public servants? Yes, okay. uh, firefighters, policemen, uh, first responders, basically any profession that can inspire a young person. Mm -hmm. uh, we 
particularly uh, primarily target uh, low income neighborhoods. Uh, affordable housing. Yeah. What you're, it's, affordable housing is what you're trying to affect. Yes, basically. Uh, and to be, to be frank, it's homes that's in the hood. So if, and you only see blighted properties in the hood. You don't see those in the blighted properties in the suburbs at all. Right. We're so, talking about urban, urban New Orleans. Urban New Orleans. So if a young person is growing up in a neighborhood full of blight, uh, it kind of depicts where their, their future is going, unfortunately. If you're seeing a drug paraphernalia in these blighted properties, uh, it often draws crime. It often, uh, you see, uh, Early, as early as 8 o'clock in the morning, people on the side uh, drinking alcohol. That plays a huge uh, part into your subconscious. So if we can rebuild those homes and inspire you, uh, if we can rebuild those homes, it will inspire young people to be like those professions, those educators, those uh, firefighters, those policemen at the end of the day. You're trying to change the culture. Trying to change the culture. In other culture. words, give people something positive to, 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 uh, to look up to. Yes, indeed. And, and by rebuilding these blighted properties, you are elevating the, the culture of the neighborhood. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. How many, how many blighted properties and homes have you been able to, um, to, to renovate, to save? Yes, uh, so we're actually meeting the deadline. Today we'll be closing on uh, our most recent project, and this was uh, mark number 19. 19? 19 home, yes. Okay. And the deadline is, is today, yes. well, oh, tonight, yes. and, and when, you, when are you going to closing, and, and who is this particular house for? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we, <laughs> we'll be uh, closing September the 17th uh -huh. uh, for educating Miss, uh, uh, I won't speak of her name. Well, right of course, now, that's yeah. private, that's personal. Yeah. Uh, she's very appreciative. Uh, it's cool to uh, put her into this neighborhood in the Bayou St. John, of course. Bayou St. John uh, neighborhood? Yeah, Bayou St. John. Mm -hmm. And uh, the great part is that we have a project uh, right next door that we'll be working on pretty soon. So you, you generally stay in, in one particular neighborhood and acquire as many houses as you can, rehabilitate those, move people in, and then target another area? Is that how that works? Yeah, for the, we actually lucked up with this project. Uh, we've been in this neighborhood for the last four years, and we actually really? bought uh, four properties uh, at once. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that in the future, of course, uh, because sometimes you can just uh, get sometimes big you can, it's, it's a lot. It's overwhelming. Uh, and I found that we weren't uh, completing homes uh, in a timely fashion because we had so many. So anytime we'll get over, we'll get uh overwhelmed with the project, we just hop to the next compared to completing it and then turning that home around. But uh, of course, we like to stay in the neighborhood because, uh, for a certain amount of time. It brings, we build relationship with the neighbors, with uh, the community, uh, and ultimately everyone wins at the end of the day. Well, you are a winner. Pence Holmes and Earl James, both of you are, are winners and you're winning for the people of, of uh, the city of New Orleans. Thank you both for being here, and uh, we're excited to hear about your project and hope to have you back. Thank you. Appreciate you. You're welcome. We would again like to thank our guests for joining us this evening here on Affordable Housing Matters. On next month's show, we will talk to Entergy and discuss the new role they're playing in affordable housing. Also, the NOLA Lending Group will be with us to discuss more of their helpful lending options for you. Remember, if you would like to rewatch this or any other episodes of Affordable Housing Matters, please visit WLAE.com and click on the programming link. There you can view this and all of our past episodes of this program. I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Norman Robinson. Have a good night.